to make marriage work. Next week, by the help of the Spirit, I'll be teaching on exploits, um, anointed for exploits. Because in the month of February, our intent was to teach um, exploits, um, achieving exploits through faith. But because of these two series that came into it based on this love season, um, so I'll be teaching those things into month of March, then we'll take it off from there. But there's going to be a special prayer for people in business and in career next week as I began to unveil to us the mind of God. And, you know, I was just thinking through um, some of the things happening in the nation uh, recently. And I remember that during the crossover service, even before the crossover service, I made mention of some of these things. And, um, and it's very, and of course, I, I, I had no premonition, I had no knowledge that it were going to happen, but I just saw it in the spirit. And, um, and um, truthfully, it's, it's not that it's going to end. You understand? So all this inflation, hunger, you know, um, to be candid with us, because one of the reasons why you come to church is to also know the mind of God concerning the nation or concerning the community. And to be candid with us, um, it's not going to end. You understand? Um, however, for the believers, there are advantages advantages that we can make use of when it comes to things like this so that is why we come to church not only to you know um to just find a family a community but to also know the mind of god and one of which is and i said it that this is the year where you have to be financially intelligent financially intelligent i said earlier late last year and um during our crossover service that you have to be financially intelligent it's a year where you have to be prudent Amen. You have to be prudent with your finances um, um, by saving and by investment. And it's also a year that you have to practice the principle of generosity because you only give yourself out of poverty. You don't save yourself out of poverty. Is someone hearing me here? So um, in the, uh, as I teach further from next week, I will explore into those options because people are already giving up. You know, uh, people are already scared. Um, crime rate is increasing. Um, people are already uh, saying, where will the next meal come from? But there is, there is a mind of God concerning this particular sense. This is not the first time there will be a recession. As a matter of fact, there is recession now in UK. There is recession in Japan. Um, so the recession is everywhere. However, within the uh, mind of God, we know what we can do. Praise the Lord. So Proverbs chapter 24. You are going to love this series. Amen. For the singles I came for you last week. For the married, I'm here for you. If you are with your husband or your wife, the Lord sends me to you today. And if you are not married, it's, it's a very fantastic um, teaching for you to have understanding of, you know, as we go further. Proverbs chapter 24, verse 3. Scripture says, through wisdom a house is built, and by understanding it is established. By knowledge, the rooms are filled with all precious and pleasant riches. He said, through wisdom, the word wisdom there in the um, Hebrew word is chokma. Uh, the word wisdom there means true skillfulness. So when we are talking about wisdom here, we are not talking about something grandiose. We are talking about true skillfulness is a house built. Now, this is a strong proof. That when it comes to building a home, there is a skill involved. Did you get what I'm saying here? When it comes to building a home, scripture says, through skillfulness, a house is built. When you want to build a home, there is a skill or level of skill needed. It's like you want to get employment into a company. They have certain level of skills needed for you, you know, to be able to maneuver through the productivity of that particular portfolio. So through wisdom, through skillfulness, a house is built. Someone say through wisdom. Through wisdom. Hallelujah. So through skillfulness, a house is built. The word house there means a family is built. It's made by yes. That's what it means. Through skillfulness, a family is built. So you have to be skillful to build a family. Skill is needed. Praise the Lord. And through understanding, it is established. The word understanding there means through intelligence. 
So I'm breaking this thing down so that you will understand that when it comes to building a home or building a family, it is more of a skill. Did you get what I'm saying here? Yeah. A skill can be learned through understanding intelligence is a house built. Through intelligence is a house established. There is a level of intelligence to build a family. You don't just go into relationship or into marriage with the things that you have learned from parents. Do you get what I'm saying here? Many of us are actually living our parents' life in our marriage. That's what it is. You know, last week I was, ex- uh, I was explaining one of the things still affecting me, the fact that I don't miss people. There's, there is, I, you can go for 15 years, I don't miss you. When you come back, we continue. I don't, it's, it, it's a default. Because somewhere along the line, I never stayed with my parents. I never, I never, I never saw my dad tell my mom that I love you. Never. Called me for once. I said, "I shall go. You know, I love you. I cherish you. You are the best. Never, never. So it, it, it takes a while for me to face you and tell you I love you. I know we try. <laughs> so I I have grown up to believe that when I love you, I love you. I don't need to say it. So it, I need to learn the skill of saying I love you, even if at that moment I don't feel like it." So it is true wisdom. It is by intelligence. It takes intelligence to build a home. You don't just build a home because you went to school. Listen to me. Marriage is not taught in school. Hope you know that. So it takes skillfulness to build a family. It takes intelligence, discretion. As scripture says, by knowledge. The word knowledge there means by awareness. By recognition. I'm breaking these things down. By recognition, the rooms are filled with pleasant riches. By recognition. So when it comes to building a home, you need skillfulness, you need intelligence, and you need awareness. Awareness of your husband, awareness of your spouse, awareness of your wife. Some of us, you just don't know that your children are different. The awareness that you have a sanguine as a child, then you have a choleric as a child, they are two different people. Two different. So you can't relate with A the way you are relating with B because there needs to be an awareness. There is a child that doesn't send you, whether you say good morning, I love you. There is one that needs that particular statement. Now, if you say, oh, you are always mushy, mushy. You, you need somebody to approve you before you... But because of another one, you will kill the self-esteem of another. And that's what happens sometimes when you see that firstborn. Now, let, let me tell you this. Very powerful. Firstborn don't do well. Because, and you see that secondborn and thirdborn, they do well. Let me tell you why. Not in all cases. But psychologically, let me tell you why. Because when the firstborn comes in, and you give them all the attention. Sec- the next thing, you don't pregnant. Amen. You know, the next thing pregnancy comes in, and when pregnancy comes in, then the firstborn, the attention leaves him immediately. So all his life is craving for attention, hating the secondborn. Now the secondborn, because he knew that we were two, we are two, he grew up to know that we are two in the family. He's not attention focused because he knows that the attention has been split there from the beginning. So you hardly see secondborn seeking for attention, but firstborn always seeking for attention. Now, if you don't have intelligence to know that it is not that something mysterious, it's just the way life is. So firstborn needs a lot of attention because you have sat, you have, you have severed them of that attention. You now say, oh, you are not like your brother. Meanwhile, that statement, listen to me. If you are beginning to tell your children that you are not like your brother, you are killing them. So I'm talking to parents now. Oh, can't you see your sister is doing well in mathematics? You are killing that son. Because there are ways to relate. And that's what scripture says, by understanding. It takes intelligence to lead the house. Even as a couple, this thing that we, amen, praise the Lord, it takes intelligence to have it. You get it when you get home. 
So uh, scripture says, Genesis chapter 2, verse 18, it said, it is not good that man should be alone. So the concept of bringing a woman to a man is the concept of God. He said, I will now make him an help that is meet for him. The word help there means Ezer or Ezer. That's where we get the word Ebenezer from. Now Ebenezer means the stone of help. Yeah, my help has come. That's Ebenezer. You understand? Now, when God said, I will give him helper, which means Ezra, it means God said, I will give you help. So, when a partner comes into your life, a wife, a husband, they come to help. Now, let me explain what help is. Listen to me. Help is not help until the help is equal to your strength or more than your strength. This is where the concept of honoring your wife comes from, even if you go to the book of 1 Peter chapter 3 from verse 7. For example, if I want to pick up, I mean the heaviest equipment here should be this subwoofer. Am I right? You can try it. So if I want to pick up this subwoofer and I call my son, who is a six-year-old boy, and say, help me, he's, he's a help. But the help is not suitable. So this is, this is where you watch destiny. So for singles, this, this is the mystery here. The weight of your destiny determines the kind of lady or man you marry. The lack of understanding of what you have is what makes you feel emotion should come first before destiny. So people choose bomb bomb, amen, and shapes. Instead of choosing the weight of the destiny that they carry, it is what you carry that dictates who helps you. Did you get what I'm saying here? It is what you carry that dictates who helps you. If you want to die in your local government, you can find someone in local government level. But if you are made for the world, you find help that can take you to the world. So if I want to get this subwoofer, what I'll do is, I would not even get my wife in terms of this subwoofer. Do you get what I'm saying here? Because she too can't help me. Amen. So I will get a very hefty brother. Someone of my own strength or someone of a bigger strength. Listen to me. The way help is, whoever needs to help you should either be of your strength or strength bigger than you. So when we talk about getting help, we are saying the lady you are bringing into your life is of equal strength or of strength bigger than you. And that is why, as a man, you must glory in the fact that your woman knows how to do things. I was saying it last week. Somebody said, if your wife is any more than you, he said, some people get angry. Me, I have no shame. I tell you, if you hate more than me, it's part of the strength that you should want bring on board. Gladly enjoy it. Gladly. Because you are called as help unto me. It's on here. Yeah. So your wife is not inferior to you. When scripture says we should deal with women as weaker vessels, he was not talking about inferiority. He was talking about fragility. The fact that, you know fragility, which means undo with care. Because they are expensive. And do it care. So this is the kind of mindset that we begin to have. That when God gives a wife, God gives a wife to help you. Tell someone to help you. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. So the Lord gives wives to help. So if you are married here today, look at your wife, send her a text right now. And said, you are my helper. Help me. <laughs> you know, last week I told my wife, you people just, it's because you, it's because you, it's pastor, pastor, pastor. I said, even me, I need help. I'm in dilemma. Pastor, you are not supposed to do this. This is not how to do this. I said, it's because I stay in this house with you. Even me, I'm shaking. I'm making decisions on behalf of the church. I'm shaking like, hmm. <laughs> And my wife will be telling me, no, that's not how to do it. That's wrong. And I'm saying, you don't know that even me, I'm afraid. Help me. <laughs> and that's what I mean. 
That's why men die very fast. You just be taking everything. I'm a man of the house. I'm a man. My brother, you need help. Die. Don't die before your time. You need help. And I've told my wife by the time we you know get married, I mean we're married, we get hold and on mugu and everything, we go for it together. I need help. So, so, and my children is calling me. We will bond them. We go. You can't go and say I should not be cooking in me myself. No, we go. We take the same flight. We go. You are to help me. You are not to make me cook. We are we, we either cook it together or we go together. <laughs> Amen. Maybe I can do it myself. I can. No, we go together. Praise the Lord. So God sent helper to you. And when God sent helper, maximize it. Don't be a macho man. Maximize your husband. Maximize your wife. There is more things your wife can do than cooking. Some people have reduced their wife to baby factory. There are more things that your wife can do. And even as a woman, heart as help. It's not everything I know. Yes, no, you know. No, I just help. I just need to stay on this. But let me now go. This is my main sermon. So the major weapon that the devil used against family, and I'm going to break this down and we'll handle this, is what I call poor communication. And I'm going to list out five areas of communications where marriages have been affected. And now, if you hold on to these communication factors, it will help you a lot. Because I read through the scripture and the few that I've read. From Adam to Abraham to Samson, the problem with them is communication. Look at what happened to Adam. God said unto Adam that you will not what eat of this fruit, for in the day that you eat of it, you will what surely die. When the devil came to Eve, the devil said, what did the Lord say? Hear what Eve said. Eve said, the Lord said we should not eat of this fruit, neither should we touch it. Did God tell them not touch it? Because the devil knew that incomplete information leads to disobedience. God said, do not eat. Eve, when Eve got the communication, she got the communication of do not touch. So the devil knew that there was a break in communication, then he entered into it. Did you get what I'm saying here? Yeah. When Adam was looking for baby, Abraham was looking for baby, and God said, in you shall the seed of the earth be blessed. God already said, in you and Sarah. But based on the communication, Sarah did not have that communication. Adam, Abraham did not communicate to him. So when Sarah said, go into my maid, he should have told her that this is the communication of God. And said, this is what God said. Most of the time you think your wife is against you, but you have not told your wife what your future should hold. That is why she keeps arguing with you. Did you get what I'm saying here? Yes, sir. You have not sat her down and said that this is what our company will look like. This is what our babies will look like. Now they begin to argue with you, but you have not communicated. What happened to Samson too? The woman said, show me my power. After two rounds, three rounds, amen, praise God. Show me your power, show me your power. The communication system there was broken. But look at the life of Joseph and Mary. When Mary had the dream, Mary did not keep it to herself. Did you get what I'm saying? It went to, no matter how hard the vision is communicated. Mary could have said that when the angel appeared to me and said that you were going to carry a baby, then you would say, ah, no, I, there's no way I can tell Joseph this. So Joseph, no. Mary went to Joseph and said, this is what the Holy Spirit said. You might be struggling with it. And like I told my wife, I said, listen, when you say some things, I might not answer you immediately, but be rest assured that I'm thinking about it. Husbands should know how to communicate the ideas in their heart to their wife. Mary said, this is what the Holy Spirit said. Joseph was fighting with it. Then when God knew that Joseph knows about it, then the Lord now sent angel to confirm it to Joseph. When you have not communicated, there's no way they can confirm it. So you have this vision for your house, but you have not communicated to your husband. You have not communicated to your wife. So you will see it. Bathsheba called David there. He said, this is what you told me, that my son will come after you as king. You can come up and bring Adonijah. 
This is what you said. The communication was there from the beginning. That your son will step in after me. Then she brought the word to David. Poor communication is the most effective way to destroy a family. That's what I'm saying. Thank you, Lord. Over 50% of divorce around the world, you can Google it, is based on poor communication. Areas of communication. Amos chapter 3, verse 3, scripture says, Can two work together except they be agreed? Number one, spiritual values. Now, that, this is why I said this will help both the singles and the married. There must be communication of your spiritual values. That as a family, this is what I hold dear to my heart. Because the apex of all knowledge that saves in the days of trouble is spiritual knowledge. The bedrock of any lasting marriage is the focal point of their resort, which must be spiritual values. If everything tumbles and goes down, we must be able to meet at a particular junction, which is spiritual values. There is a junction every family should meet. Your family should meet at a junction. No matter how angry I am, the word of God still becomes the final authority over every discussion. No matter how angry I am. The word of God still becomes the final authority. So there is a result. We all can argue, but we all hang it at a point, which is spiritual values. Any home without spiritual values, every values look like what they are looking for. Spiritual values on, I call this spiritual food. Spiritual values on the message that you listen to. Listen to me. Not every pastor can be your pastor. Not every message can be your message. Did you get what I'm saying? These things are powerful things that destroy marriage. Someone said, I believe he's speaking in tongues. Another said, I don't believe he's speaking in tongues. It can't work. It can't work. I know a sister, when she's praying, her husband sends her out of the room. Powerful sister in the Lord. He said, all those things, go and say it outside. Then the children are confused. So what pays me most is the fact that the children are confused. So one is siding daddy, that mommy is shouting. Another one is with mommy, and say mommy is praying for the family. And so anytime mommy wants to pray, mommy goes to their room. Spiritual, we must agree on the message. We must agree on the on the on the word. Spiritual values. We must agree on the language, worship, prayer, Bible as final authority. We must agree on certain tenets or tenets of our family, like giving and generosity. It's a major thing in a spirit in a Christian family. Wife, if you have to save for every major landmark in your life, you lack favor. Just write that down. Not even in this economy. Because the last time I checked, bag of cement was 7.5. As we are speaking right now, it's 10. The last time I checked, a five-bedroom flat in my estate is 250. As I'm speaking right now, it's 415. Million, no. Not 415,000. Else I will collect money from you now and go and buy it. If you cannot save 250, how can you save 415? Did you get what I'm saying here? Yeah. Which means that it is not by hard labor that a man finds favor, it is by the countenance of God then if you are not a giver, you can't be a receiver. That's what I'm saying. So if you are in a family and you are you are pressed, you are you are, you are akagom. Amen. The family will continually to struggle because you have no generosity running in your vein. Listen to me. There are certain things that we enjoy today because of the generosity of our parents. If you are not sowing seeds now, when your children are outside, they will land in a situation where nobody is able to favor them. Did you get what I'm saying here? 
Have you ever, have you ever not heard when you're parented, except if I've done wrong to somebody's child before? Except if I've not done good to people before, that you will not find favor. We have gone to strange countries and favor from the time of departure and the time of arrival. Not Sometimes you will know that this is not because of you. This is because someone has sown a seed. So you do some things for the sake of posterity and the journey ahead. Spiritual values. Sit down, and I'm saying because some puppies are here, you need to sit down with your family and say, what is the spiritual value of this family? Sit down with your relationship. What is the spiritual value of this relationship? A whole lot of things are flying around. People are selling all manners of things on social media. Listen, you cannot live your family by social media. I hope you know that. You must sit down. What are the values of this family? Thank you, Jesus. Spiritual values. Let me show you. Ah. Oh. Numbers chapter 36. Verse 5. Um, please, give me 10 minutes more. Just have 10 minutes more to this time. Oh, Karo da Basata, Mama So Paradia. Numbers 36. See something here. Powerful scripture. I wanted to share it last. Then we go into our sermon. All right. Look at it. Numbers chapter 36, verse 5. Scripture said, Then Moses commanded the children of Israel. I mean, there's context to this, but let me just explain. According to the word of the Lord, saying, What is the tri- what? The tribe of sons of Joseph speak is right. Sons of Joseph, Ephraim and Manasseh, from which we came. And there is an inheritance that belongs to them. I hope you know that the inheritance of Joseph was double inheritance. Okay. So, this is what the Lord commanded concerning the daughters of Zelophehad, yes, which are what? They are from the descendant of Joseph. They have an inheritance. Hear what they said. Let them marry whom they think best. I Last week I was explaining that. So which means this is not about God. This is the fact that based on the values that you have, you choose who you think best based on the value. Am I right? We said to that last week. Now hear what it says. He now said, but they may marry only within the family of their father's tribe. So the inheritance of the children of Israel shall not change hands. From tribe to tribe. Did you hear that? You can marry whom you think best, but within the tribe of your family, so that your inheritance will not be exchanged to another tribe. There is an inheritance that you have in Christ Jesus. You can't share it with an heathen. Oh, you didn't get what I'm saying. You get when you get home. There are certain things that the Lord has deposited into your destiny. When you marry outside your tribe, you have transferred it. Certain values that your family should hold. When you marry someone of opposite value, you have lost it. He said, this is what I tell the daughter of Zalva. That you can marry whom you think best. But let it be within your family. So that your inheritance will not be shared with another. So that what God has promised you will not be ridiculed by a man. That the man looks at you and said, what, what, what is it? Are you finer than this? You can't do this. You can't, you can't take a nation. Your inheritance in Christ can be ridiculed by a man you claim you love. Listen to me. I've said it everywhere. That this love thing, that one person is for one person is a liar. If you get to Ghana today, you find someone. He said, let them marry whom they think best, but within their tribe. Second one. If I had more time, I would have gone to a second one. Vision alignment. Vision alignment. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18. Without vision, the people perish. The strength of a family's vision, the strength of a family's vision is the platform on which greatness is built. The strength of a family's vision is the platform on which greatness is built. Any marriage without a strong, agreed vision is mere combination of errors. There must be vision for your family. You must agree and communicate the vision. Before I enter this marriage, I told I'm a pastor. I will never wake up one day to say I'm a footballer. 
Never. The vision is clear. I wrote it. The vision is clear. That the Lord will send me from one nation to the other. I might not be at home for some time. The vision is clear. So you will not wake up one man and say, Is that wrong? Is that wrong? Is that wrong? Let's leave me with the gate. I said it from the beginning. Amen. The vision is clear. I want a woman of God. Not everybody that they'll be touching her. Touching, is, uh, is she sits down on their lap. Is that I'm going to club. We don't go to club here. I'm not saying it's bad. But for my destiny, we don't go to club. The vision is clear. So what is the question you need to ask? What are we set out to achieve? How are we working to achieve it? When are we setting out to achieve these things? These are the questions you ask. What are we set out to achieve as a family? So the vision should be there. Thank you, Jesus. Number one, individual vision. Number two, corporate vision. Number three, parental vision. Vision for the children. I had a vision for my children. I, I, you see, I don't have access to many countries. I have to go up and down, up and down, up and down. But I had a vision that when I want to have kids, they should at least have access to nations. It's part of what we sat down to discuss. All this one that will be running out, that will not be queuing 15, 15, 15 minutes. No, I don't have time. Whatever, every generation must be a successive generation. A better version of the previous generation. So I want my generation to be a better version of me. So I didn't go to a school where, you know, they will give them this, they will give them. You know, sometimes when I just look at my children, I say, ah! You come home, you say, you don't, you, I, I don't want to eat conflict. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. Well, we were growing up, there was no choice. You just, they, we said, everybody's eating. The bad. There, was, there was no cooling cooling that time. When you buy it, five naira, you can't break it with your teeth. You put it on the floor. You now go and find stone. You, you are there. Uh-huh, you are there. You will now break it. I said, never. At the point I said, Gary, in this house, I forbid it. It's only for me because I've grown up with it. I forbid. I've taken Gary for everybody. Ah! I, I tried. Ah! The way we took Gary in those days, it's as though our life was dependent on it. So, parental vision. What is the vision for your children? What kind of school should they go to? These are the things that you need to discuss with your spouse. What kind of school? Now, this is, I know this doesn't look like revelation to you, but these are little salient things that a family needs. Because psychologically it has been proven that the school your children go to determines how far they will go in the future. Because it's from their school that they get friends. And their friends are part of what? Their greatness in life. So you must be careful the school they go. I'm not saying you should go out of your pocket, but my brother, try. You know, there was a school they were going at a point, point in time. When we go, my wife is here, when we go to parents, what's that thing? PTA. When we get to PTA, I'm angry. I'm like, why? I'm like, why are the parents dressing like this? They just look, it's, it's not bad. But at that level, they, they, why is it like this? They said, let's just change the school. So when I changed the school, the first time I went to the PTA, my wife saw that I was smiling. I said, these are people that I want to relate with. They, they look like what I want to relate with. The way they were talking, the way they were just like, ah, this, this is, even from the parents, I knew that I'm in the safe hand. These are things you will sit down with and discuss. You don't just bring children into the family and say that they, they can attend any school. They can, it will affect you. It will what? Affect you. So you must be careful the school that they go to. You must be careful the things that they watch. All these cartoons that you just leave them, my, my wife is very fantastic at that. You just leave them watching all manners of cartoon. Now they are cartoon, Tom and Jerry servicing themselves. Terrible things. One day I was doing, a, what's the assignment or homework? What did they give them? Whatever they give them. Homework. And I saw, uh, Ray is a gay. And because he's a gay, I asked some, <laughs> oh God, oh Lord. I called the teacher straight. 
I said, never in your life. It was because of me they removed that curriculum in that school. I said, never in your life. They call it print primer or whatever primer it is. Never in your life. Hey, so, so something is okay. Because it's okay, I am a re- you, you are a what? I don't saw my son reading it. You must have parental vision. This is how I want my children to behave. This is how I want to treat them. As a man, be deeply involved in your children. Don't say that you are the man of the family. No. I always say, man, don't say that you are the man of the family. I'm the man of it. I don't have time. You will have time. One day you will have time. One day you will have time. When your wife goes for home, you will have time for yourself at home. You will have time. Because when it's time to punish the children, they send them to you. When it's time to punish them, they send them to you. When it's time, you, you always feel like at the man. Like the man. you never play with them. You never say, I, I love you. You are welcome. You never, they always knew you have the tough person. You have the tough person. That's why when the time they graduate, when they call for someone to come for their graduation, they will call mommy. When they do, they will call mommy. You will not be doing it. It's because of what you have sown. So from now, I play with them. So when you want to write, you call both of us. Look both of us. Because you just have the idea and the man of the family you come into the house, the whole house is shaking. Continue. 15 years down the line, you will see it. Continue. Parental vision. Legacy impact vision. What do you want to make out of your family? What legacy do you want to leave? What legacy do you want to leave? When, my children, when I'm gone, I want my children to say, my daddy walked with the Lord. I. And a pastor was speaking during the week, Pastor Jerry Eze. He said, in the school, the daughter told the mistress, he said, my daddy can see you. If I do anything wrong now, my daddy will see it. What, what a legacy. I know a pastor, his wife, when he was sleeping, his wife went out before he woke up. He went to meet um, one of his, one of our business partner who happens to be a man. You understand? So they did business and all those things and started. When she came back, the man said, where did you go to? He said, no, no, no. I went out and he said, hey, so where did you go to? He was arguing. The man said, the Lord said to me, as you were going, you did this, you did this, you did this. He explained everything. The woman said, can't someone even do something in secret again? I'm telling you, you must leave a legacy for your children. Scripture says a good man leaves inheritance for his children, children. Kai. Alignment. So the communication of your vision. Number three, communication of your affection. Songs of Solomon. My God. I call that Bahashtaha. Songs of Solomon. In those days when we were growing in the things of God, when we want to write love letter, love letter. This is where we come to. Songs of Solomon. Doxology. <laughs> My God. You know these people have been, they have been there. Amen. He said, tell me, all oh, you whom I love, where you feed your flock, where you make it rest at noon, for why should I be as one who veils herself by the flock of your companion? Oh, Lord. If you want line, Songs of Solomon is your line, I'm telling you. When you, ah, oh Lord, I was going through the book of numbers. I discovered I don't have your number. Oh my, glory to God. Say, that's, that's reason, I mean. That's reason, that's reason. There are these, we know there are these things that we have. Praise God, amen. Oh, glory to God. Now, the communication is affection and chemistry. Look at what he said. He said, tell me, oh, you whom I love, where you feed your flock. I always tell people, don't give your spouse the, the assignment to discover what you want. My wife tried this earlier in our marriage. She tried it. I, I just called her one day. I said, my sister, just tell me straight. There's no, there's no, but you will find it. Don't let me find it. Just tell me what you like. And that's what most of you couples do. Pastor Larry is looking at his wife. I caught you, right under. Don't give, don't let your wife go through that stress. Or you will find it later. Don't let me, we have, we still have 50, 60 years together to find many things. The one I can find right now, let me find it. 
He said, tell me, oh my Lord. Tell your husband, your wife, what you like, your affection. Don't give them project and say, you, they will find it out later. Uh, yeah, you will find out whether I like this or not. Tell the person you like it. Thank you, Lord. Affection should not be eating. It's not a sick hide and seek game. So discuss your affection. Discuss your five love language. So there's something called five love language. It's called the words of affirmation. Some, some women or some men just like telling them that you look good. If that is your wife's primary love language, you need, you need to learn. Don't say, no, that's not who I am. You must be, you must be like that. You must be like that. It, it, just, it just so happened that that's a love language. And if you want your family to be very cozy and not on fire, you must give it to her. Oh, I love your hair. I love your lipstick. You know, that can save you for one week. <laughs> I'm telling you, these are things that, but as a man, sometimes you say, you say no, no, you know, I buy a gift. Some women just don't like gifts. No matter the gift you get them, it doesn't. It's words of affirmation. Oh, thank you for passing your exam. Thank you for doing good. You, you, are, you, are, you are doing all those things. Some is quality time. Just stay with them from morning to night. And just be, you know, oh, eh, oh, yeah. They, and some men also like words of affirmation. So I'm telling you, I've seen some men that just tell them that, oh, I, I know you will do that already. I know you will make it. That thing can save you one million. Quality time. This one is what I don't like. But fortunately, it's what I have to deal with. It's act of service. <laughs> I hate that love language. <laughs> with passion. But I have to deal with it. My wife just likes the fact that you are bathing, bathing the babies. You are washing dishes. I don't, I, I don't understand. It just so happened that that's what me I hate. I just don't understand. She, I see the smile whenever I'm walking at home. I see the smile on her face. I'm like, I'm tired. It's a very terrible love language, but it's fine. Thank you, Lord. Some is touch, sensory touch. Just touch them, just play with them, pet their hair, pet their bees. Some is gift. Hallelujah. So you must communicate what your affections are. You must communicate what your chemistries are. And lastly, today, you must communicate your financial transparency and intelligence. 55.6% of the causes of divorce is financial problem. You will be shocked. People hardly divorce themselves because their wife is not fine or their husband is not fine. You will be shocked. People hardly divorce themselves because of in-laws. You'll be shocked. Finances is a major cause of divorce. So there must be discussion. There must be communication as to the earnings in the family. The income the family needs to have. There must be discussion on the expenses of the family. Some men just like buying things. Impossible buying. You must stop impossible buying. And these things are powerful things. Until you get into it, then you now know that it's a major deal in marriage. Impulsive buying. Before you know it, the woman wants to buy clothes. He wants to buy, he wants to buy honey. She wants to buy, he said something is happy. She wants to buy everything. So have a communication, have communication concerning your earnings, concerning your expenses, concerning your intelligence. Intelligence means your savings, your finances, your investment, your businesses. There must be clear communication. There must be clear communication. So, always remember, whatever worked or whatever works is worked at. Marriage is work. You must work at it. 
marriage is work. Ask people who have stayed married for 5, 10, 15, 20 years, 30 years. Marriage is work. If you are not ready to work, you are not ready to marry. And love is a decision to stay committed. Love is not a feeling. Love is a decision to stay committed. Love is not a feeling. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Can we pray in tongues for seconds? Thank you, precious Father. Thank you, precious Father. Now, this is the prayer you want to pray. Father, help me to build an exemplary family. Whether you are married yet today, you are about to be married, help me to build an exemplary family. In the name of the Lord Jesus, pray in the Holy Ghost. I give you a few seconds, pray in the Holy Ghost. Oh, we give you praise and we give you glory. In Jesus' matchless name, we are prayed. In Jesus' matchless name, we are prayed. In Jesus' matchless name, we are prayed. Amen.